Hey everyone, as you can see, we're not in a normal filming location. That's because we're refinishing our basement again so we can get back to living down here. Well, the place I film is actually going to be changing over the next couple weeks, so I thought I'd throw this together real quick because I really wanted to get this video out. Today, we're actually going to go over the XT60 connectors in the Ender 3 and how to fix them really cheap and real easy in less than 10 minutes. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Okay, so we're gonna get started, but first, let's go through what we need. Number one, we need the solder and seal connectors straight from Amazon. You get a whole big box like this, so you could do actually quite a few things, but we're only gonna need two. We need some sort of wire stripper, I prefer this style, but you can use any style wire stripper you want. And we're gonna need some sort of heat gun. This is my wife's embossing heat tool. She's letting me borrow it for this film. That's why it's purple, but hey, purple's cool, why not? Now that we know what we need, let's get to it. We're gonna start today by pushing the bed all the way forward and getting it out of the way. Then, these are your XT60 connectors here. We're just gonna go ahead and unplug them. And we can inspect them quick. You know, mine didn't have any scorching, but I think we're gonna replace them anyway, just to be safe. Next thing we're gonna do is grab the flush cuts that came with the kit, and we're just gonna go ahead and cut these right after the black shrink on each one. Just like that. I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way so you can see. And just like that. Once you got them cut, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna strip back a little bit of the wire on each one. So we're gonna put it in there and just strip it back. About that much. So we're gonna do that for all four. So now that they're stripped, we're ready to go. We can grab the 12 gauge uh, solder and seal connectors, that's these right here, they're blue. And we can go ahead and put your first wire in, just like that. And take your second wire, and you're going to put it in there, and it's going to thread. So the wires are going to do this on the inside of that solder connection, right in the center, and that's what you want. You want to push them in there, so all the wires kind of overlap each other like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and shrink this with the heat gun. And what we wanna do is I raise my X gantry up, that way we can get the heat gun kind of facing backwards like this, and we can kind of rotate around like that. So I got my wife's uh, embossing heat tool here, and we're gonna go ahead and shrink this up. Okay, so the first one is shrunk and done, and it looks good. It's tight in there, and if you can see, the solder is all melted through the wires there, which is great. We're going to go ahead and do the second one, just like we did the first, and then we'll be done. As you can see, they're both done now. I have it uh, shrunk all the way through, and the solder is melted right in the center, so it goes through all the wires, which is great, and that's what we need. From here, we're done. You can reroute your cables however you had them cable managed. In my case, I'm gonna put them on here with some clips, and we're gonna call that a day. So I did go ahead and cut the sleeves off of the XT60 connectors, and as you can see, on both of mine, on both sets, they're soldered. Not saying it's a great solder, but they are soldered. That's probably why mine never even got hot before. But I got lucky on this one, and this one was bought in the end of November. Again, as you can see, they're soldered. All right, you're done. The XT60 connectors are cut out and replaced, and you're good to go. Here's a couple quick things that I learned before I go. Number one, when you're using your heat gun, you need to be very careful that you're not stationary. You don't stand still on any of the 3D printer parts for too long. This gets really hot, and you don't want to melt or damage anything on your printer. Number two, when you're shrinking the shrink wrap and you're trying to get the solder to melt, you want to move this around 
and keep it, keep it going around. You don't want to hold it in one spot for too long because that spot could melt. I actually did this on the second one I did and I had to start all over. But we're good now. So just be careful with that with the heat gun. You're in close proximity and you just want to make sure you don't melt anything and you don't damage your printer. Other than that, you're good to go. I hope you guys learned something today and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. This is my cat Jameson, he's been helping me with this build. If you liked the video, please click the like button, click the subscribe button below, and if you want to get a notification every time we put out a new video, please click that little bell. Thank <laughs> you.